Hello and welcome to another driving test video. This is from a test centre in South Birmingham and we're going to be driving the full length route and as usual, as with all the other videos in this series, I'll be sharing lots of hints, tips, analysis and maybe some funny stories along the way from my 20 years of experience as a driving instructor. Now there will be times I don't speak, I will sometimes just sit back and let you watch the video, but whenever there's something worth saying, I'll be giving you lots of hints and tips to help you pass your driving test. So we're now going to pull up on the left here, and this is just to do the hill start, as you may know from watching my other videos, you always have to do a hill start on a driving test, so you'll be asked to pull over somewhere on the left and then move off again when it's safe to do so. So we're checking around, we're checking the centre mirror, the right mirror, the right blind spot. Again, you don't have to check the left mirror or the left blind spot. It is a good idea if you do, but you don't have to. That's not a requirement of moving off on the driving test. Now, if the examiner doesn't speak, they will tell you this at the beginning of the test. But if they don't speak, you just follow the road ahead there will be long periods of silence on driving tests and we're going to be going for about another half a mile until we get to a set of traffic lights and as with the other videos in this series the reason the background audio is sometimes muted as it is now is because the pupils don't always want to have their voice put online so whenever the uh, the audio goes down in the background that's just when I'm muting out any kind of sounds that I don't want in a video, like the people speaking, or it could be something we've said about someone, or anything else like that that we'd rather keep secret. So we're coming up to a set of traffic lights now, and at the traffic lights we're going to turn right. Now these lights are a little bit confusing because what happened is when they put these in you see how we will notice in a moment that we're going to go before actually so we go after the ones ahead have gone because we've had our turn he went red now they've got their turn so normally on lights you would wait in the middle doing something you call near side to near side turning which is something you should cover on your driving lessons now this particular junction it didn't work very well because this used to be two small roundabouts years ago and they changed it to this crossroads and tragically not long after they changed it somebody died on this crossroads because I got hit by a car. So they changed it so that instead of both sets of cars going at the same time and one waiting in the middle it's only one at a time that goes in each direction. So in a moment, we're going to be moving off. And if you look on the left there, there's something well worth knowing. You see how there's a solid, thick white line? Then there is a dotted line just after it. Well, this is one reason I think that that crash happened and there's been quite a few crashes here. When the light goes green on the left, as you'll see in a moment, like that, you only go to the giveaway line you would then give way to the right for vehicles that used to be coming from the right. Now I think that's a pretty stupid design because the green light is effectively saying you can only go forward a couple of metres. Always check that the light you're looking at is telling you to go but also where to go, how far can you go because it may be there are quite a few of those around this area where you can go forward but you can only go forward for a couple of metres or so. Now in a moment we're going to stand the horn. So that was the people doing the show me question where they've been asked to show how you stand the horn. Now again some people say that's a bit silly. It is to be fair a bit silly to have to stand the horn as you're driving. But the reason we did that, the reason that came into the driving test is because statistics showed that after people were passing the driving test there were many crashes being caused by people having to do things like sound the horn or open the windows, things they'd never been asked to do before on driving lessons, so that's why that came in to the driving test. 
There's also something else coming up later on in this video, which was also put into the driving test because statistics showed that people were having problems with it soon after passing the test. So I know some of these elements of the test can seem a little bit silly, but there is a good reason why they are all there. In fact, that road that we were driving along, just the one that we came up to the lights on, I remember I used to work at the end of that road many years ago, and I remember one of the first times I ever drove a car, I was driving along that road, and I couldn't see a thing because the windows were all steaming up, and no one had ever showed me how to use a heater. Now it sounds obvious, just people all say, well it's obvious, you turn it on. It's only obvious if you know. It's a bit like when you're on a quiz show, people say, why didn't they know the answer? That was obvious. It's only obvious if you know the answer. If you've never been told how to do it, it isn't obvious. So we're pulling up on the left there just before this car to do an angled start. So this is where you move off from behind another vehicle to prove you can do that. So we're now going to move off along this road. And you very often do parallel parking on this road. You don't need to memorise this. As I've said this video, I've said in other videos, the point of these videos is not to memorise the routes and not to, you know, not to try and drive them from memory. The point is to pick up general tips that will help you overall. But you see there are lots of cars on this road, so you very often do the parking on this road. End of the road will be turning right. And again, I am aware you can't see the people. Um, normally, in most of my videos, I have cameras on the inside, the front, the rear. And I even have one on the, the pedals sometimes, pedal cam. But yeah, on this occasion, we just film in with the front camera. So when I go around this truck, you know how we go slowly. A lot of people fail because they just don't slow down. Why do you have to slow down when you pass a truck like that? Well, there could be anyone walking in front of it. There could be work people walking in front of the truck. And I say work people because it was this, this road specifically I actually saw um, a load of roofers and there was a female roofer. And I thought, that's quite unusual. How nice to see a female roofer. So now we're going to be doing the independent driving. So on this occasion we're going to be following traffic signs. At the end of the road we'll be turning left. And then we're going to follow the signs for Birmingham Airport and Solihull. So we're going to follow those signs. And it's the same direction for both places. And I'll tell you why um, Solihull is called Solihull in a moment. Because it's quite an interesting fact about that. This is about driving lessons and driving tests, but it's nice to learn some facts as well. So we did the moving off there, as we did before, we did the mirrors and the blind spot to the right. And again, you can check them to the left if you want. So, at the end of the road we go left. And then the signs begin. So I'm going to keep quiet for a moment now and just let you follow the signs. So we're heading towards Birmingham Airport and Solihull. Which way is that? So did you notice there on the sign there's a picture of an airplane? And sometimes people are actually looking for the word airport. But of course an airport is symbolised by the plane. So the signs on this route are a little bit awkward. I'm going to keep quiet and just see if you can spot the signs. Some of them are in quite difficult places to see. Which way do you go now? Well, it's a little bit harder to see on the camera, and I do apologise for the annoying buzzing sounds, the interference sounds you may hear. This is not the camera 
I normally use. This is an older one that I had, which wasn't available for long because it had a few problems. But it's okay, he does the job. The video is nice and smooth, even if it's a little bit dark at times. But yeah, the audio wasn't very good. So yeah, back there there was a sign on the right hand side of the roundabout. It's very hard to see and I don't know why they put it there. It's a really strange place to have it. But it was on the right, kind of, if you look at the roundabout again, it was kind of in two o'clock direction. If the roundabout was a clock face, the sign was at two o'clock. So which way here? Now imagine you've missed the signs, what would you do? Well generally, because we're not signalling, the best thing to do would be to just continue ahead. So we think, well no indicator left or right, and it was actually ahead, second exit. But imagine you've got it wrong or you've missed a sign. The examiner, if you ask them, will either not answer at all, or they'll just say, do what you think's best, or do what you normally do on your lessons. So in other words, if you get it wrong, it's your instructor's fault for telling you the wrong thing. So yeah, when they carry on driving, we're still following those signs. But why is Solihull called Solihull? It's called Solihull because when Birmingham was being formed many, many years ago, they used to take all of the soil that came from Birmingham and they dump it where Solihull now is. So Solihull actually comes from the name Soily Hill. Which way is it now? That white car there cut us up a little bit, did you notice? Now what's the people doing here? They've gone into the right hand lane. Now sometimes people do that because they see the bus stop and loads and loads of people think they can't drive through the bus stop because they swerve to avoid the bus stop. Did you notice about that taxi in front of us? Do you think they should have stopped at the red light or not? When the taxi went through, was the light on red? Or was it on amber? Sometimes, when you go through on an amber, it can't be avoided because you simply have to. If you break, it will cause too much interference to the vehicles behind. Would that taxi have interfered with us if they'd have braked hard? We're now going to be following the sign to Mosley. So the places they give you to follow will change as you drive around. It won't just be the same place all the time, although it can be on some routes it is. Now did you notice there the people were signalling too early because we hadn't yet passed that other road. So what do you think about that? If you've seen my other videos you might already be thinking something about that. So you're going back to that roundabout before we had the white car that cut across our lane. He was a new driver and that just shows that just because you passed the driving test does not mean you can drive well because they would certainly have failed the driving test for cutting the lane as they did. And this is something people often don't realise is that people say well I've passed my test. So what? You passed the test when? 
months ago, years ago. Does that mean it's still valid now? Well, it's legally still valid, but just because you passed the test years and years ago doesn't mean you can drive well now. You know, many times when I've had crashes with people who've crashed into us, they get out and they always say, I've been driving for 30 years. I love to know why it's always 30 years. Everyone always says 30 years. They seem to think it's some kind of advantage. They say, well, I've been driving 30 years. I've been driving longer than you. Well, here's a nice tip for you. If ever anyone boasts about how long they've been driving, you can say, oh, really? So you passed your test 30 years ago? Don't you think it's time you took it again? Or something like that. You can always say, well, if you passed your test 30 years ago, I think it's time you took it again because you're obviously out of date. And this is something people don't realise. People are so proud of their experience and how long they've been doing something. Just because you've been doing something for a long time does not necessarily make you any good at it. Imagine if I was to say 2 plus 2 equals 5 and I say that for 20 years. Does that make it true? Am I a master at adding 2 and 2 because I've been saying 2 plus 2 is 5 for 20 years? No. And like I said at the beginning, I've been an instructor for 20 years. I don't rely on just that alone to make me good. Because just because you've been doing something for a long time does not necessarily make you any good at it. So there's a nice tip for you there. Now the roundabout will be going right. And this is one of the directions you have to give pupils because there aren't any appropriate signs. I remember earlier I mentioned about the statistics showing that people were crashing after the past because they hadn't done things like opening a window, washing the windscreen, things like that. Well here is another example of something that was put onto the test quite recently that people were having problems with. So this is going to be where we pull up on the right hand side of the road. And can anybody guess why we're pulling up on the right hand side of the road. Now this is something we do which I don't personally like and a lot of people don't like this but pupils are now being taught and tested on reversing up the wrong side of the road. Now I don't recommend you ever do this unless you really really have no other choice. But the reason we do this is because statistics showed that many people were crashing when they passed the test because they parked on the opposite side of the road and they weren't used to doing it. Now you could argue they shouldn't be used to doing it because you're not supposed to do it. But this is just the way the rules are now. It's been put onto the driving test. So this is what we have to teach people. This is not something I recommend doing. So we're backing up, look at what happens in a moment. So the pupil has hit the curb. So they're now going to say to the examiner what everyone says, what do I do next, what do I do? Well, what are they doing? They're trying to go back up the curb even more. If you feel resistance when you're going back, it's normally because you've hit something like the curb. But does that matter, do you think, in terms of the driving test result? What do you think? You see the pupils hit the curb again there. So they've hit the curb quite hard. That was a noticeable bang. So they're going forward and then they're going back. Now do you think this is going to affect the result of the test? Will they fail because of this? It's not as clear cut as people think and you know, ultimately, what it comes down to is it's always at the examiner's discretion. 
there are rules about they shouldn't do this and they should be able to do this. But what it really, really comes down to is it's down to the examiner's opinion. So at the end of the road, we're going to turn left and then follow the signs for Solihull. So these signs are a little bit better, a little bit clearer, whereas some of the other ones were quite hidden away. Some examiners will help you more than others, it all depends on their personality and, you know, if they want to be helpful or not. People often ask me, you know, does it matter if the examiners had a load of bad tests on the one day, is that going to affect them? Well officially of course the answer is no, because all tests are done in a uniform and fair way. But let's just be honest about it, if an examiner's had a really bad day, is that going to affect their choice of whether you pass or not? Well yes it could, because if they're in a bad mood, because they've had quite a few bad drives that day, it's only human nature that it could affect their decision, whether it should or shouldn't. Examiners are human beings, and we're all affected by emotions and feelings. But yeah, examiners can have good days, and they can have bad days, as we all can. And we're now following the sign for Yardley Wood and Warstock. You notice there on the left how the parked cars are very close to the roundabout. Well, if you come from the other way it's actually quite hard to see that. And if you come up and use the left lane to go ahead, as you often would, you often find yourself stuck on the exit. So that's the end of the independent driving. I'm just going to give directions as normal now. But yeah, when you come into that roundabout from the other way, it's advisable to be in the right hand lane. As you can see from this sign here, it's saying right lane ahead. Now there isn't one of those signs back on the other side of the roundabout, but imagine the roundabout is where the lights are now. You will be in the right hand lane, not the left, because if you come off in the left lane, you'd be stuck behind those parked cars. So we're carrying on down the road now, just following this yellow truck, and there's a roundabout coming up. And as we said, that's the end of the independent driving. So the roundabout, we're going to be going right, second exit. And the view on this one is really open, it's a really, really nice clear view. So you can often just come up and go. You don't have to give way to the left where that van's coming from, or from ahead if you see that as left or ahead. But you notice the cyclists there. Always be aware that people may misread where you're going. You might have indicated the wrong way without knowing it. It's something you don't do on lessons which may even be a good idea, is to drive with music on. Because when you drive with music on, you often can't hear things are the signals ticking away to tell you that they're on. And if you're not used to that, I remember when I first drove with music on, and I didn't realise at one time one of my signals was still on, someone was flashing me from behind, and I thought, why did I keep flashing me? And I realised I'd left my left signal on, for about a quarter of a mile without realising because having the music on even though it wasn't that loud I couldn't tell the signal was on and there was no lights inside the car on the dashboard to tell me I was signalling. So we're carrying on towards the end of this road. Lots of people fail on this road. Can you see why? 
We see how narrow the road is with lots of parked cars and that bus was back there as well. There is a video I made, which was a very popular video on YouTube, it's had over 100,000 views now, and it was about giving way, and that was filmed just at the end of this road. It's not the same road as this, you go to the end, round about right, round about left, then again round about right, round about left, four separate roundabouts, and it takes you to that road where I filmed that thing about giving way. I might as well tell you a funny story about that now, because I remember many years ago, I had a people and I said, round about right, then round about left. And they said, oh, you're funny, you are. And I said, what do you mean I'm funny? And they said, you're a real joker. You said to go right, then go left at the same time. And I said, no, round about right, then next round about left. And they said, come on, stop messing about. Just tell me which way we're going. And I said, I've told you, the first round about we go right, and the second roundabout, we go in left. And they couldn't understand that there were two separate roundabouts. From joking around about it, they actually got quite annoyed and they were saying, look, just tell me where we're going. We can't go right and left at the same time. And I said, we're not going right and left at the same time. <laughs> we're going right on this roundabout, then the, the next roundabout on a separate roundabout, we're turning left. And they just didn't understand at all. They couldn't understand that there were two roundabouts. And when we got here, they still didn't get it. Anyway, we've gone left on that roundabout, and we're now heading up towards a hill. At the top of this road, there is a roundabout where a lot of people fail, because it may not come across that well on this camera, but it's quite a steep hill. It really is quite a noticeable hill when you get there. So, have a look at this. I'm just going to keep quiet for a little bit and have a look and see how you would handle this roundabout. What kind of method would you be doing? Would you be stopping, handbrake, clutch control, creeping, crawling? What would you be doing here to approach this roundabout? Now the roundabout will be going right, fourth exit. So which lane is it to go right? Now I know that might seem obvious, you think well it's the right lane to go right. Again, when you're watching a video, it's a lot easier to see these things. Many times there, people go in the left lane to go right, and you'll be seeing that in another one of these videos at some point in the future. And coming up here is where I failed my first driving test. Yeah, all those years ago, I came off this roundabout here, and I always remember this. There was a car, like where the blue one is on the left there. Just as I was about to pass it, this woman threw the car door wide open, and the examiner had to do an emergency stop. Now, I couldn't have been any wider, because there were cars coming towards me, and yeah, I should have seen it coming and I couldn't be ready to brake. That was just me being inexperienced. It's not the way the car there pulled off on the wrong side. That's what we did before on the, uh, the right reverse exercise. I should have stopped, it was my fault, that's you know, it's a good reason why I failed. But every time I go past that road, even though this was over 20 years ago, well over 20 years ago, <laughs> I still remember that every time I go there, and this is something you'll find about your driving test, you'll remember your driving test and your driving lessons for the rest of your life. You may forget the examiner's name or the instructor's name, you might forget a few things about them, but you always remember your driving instructor and the driving test examiner. Now this is what I've mentioned in other videos as well, about the way that these bumps can look as though we're going over them too fast. It's just the way the video is, it goes bang up in the air. We're not going that fast at all, it's just the way it looks. Next road on the right, now where do you go for this? Have a look now, where do you turn right? Where would you go? people thinking about it and yes they got it correct. If you go past that and turn in on the next one 
a bit shaky there on the Y junction. That's what you call a Y junction because it looks like a letter Y. So yeah, you are supposed to turn into the first available road. Whether you're going in, whether you're going out, the first available place that you can turn is where you should turn. There are always going to be exceptions where there might be one with a no right turn sign or a no entry sign. But on that occasion, that was correct. So we're now going to perform the emergency stop. So the pupil's been told, we're going to give you the hand signal. Is that the same taxi that passed us earlier? Is that the silver taxi that passed us by the roundabout? Anyway, we're going to carry on with the emergency stop. So be ready for this. I'm going to say stop in a moment. Stop. So there we go, that's the emergency stop done. And what I'll say to you now is, I won't ask you to do that again. And I'll tell you another story about that. I remember once, many, many years ago, this was another instructor who told me this story. They had a pupil who did a test, and the examiner will always say to you, or should always say to you after the emergency stop, I won't ask you to perform that again. And the pupil thought they were being sarcastic, they thought they got it wrong, and they actually gave up, and they started driving really badly after that. And they failed because of the bad driving that they'd done after the emergency stop. And the examiner said to them, why did you start driving so badly after the emergency stop? And they said, we well, have been sarcastic. He said, well, I won't ask you to do that again. And they said, no, no, we didn't mean that. We just mean if we say stop again, you know, that doesn't mean an emergency stop. And the people said, oh, I can't believe that. They messed up because of what they thought the examiner meant. Now, we will be doing another video, which is going to be a special video like this, where we'll look at language and the language examiners use and the way language can be misinterpreted. And if you don't know, I am also a hypnotist, so I do understand the way language is so important in people's lives. I grew up with a speech problem and I learned from that how important language is and how to communicate in ways other than just the normal methods of talking. Isn't it strange how I used to be the greatest problem in my life? I actually turned it around to become one of my most valuable assets. And that's how I now understand so much about language and communication. So we're going to pull up again on the left and then we're going to move off again. Now where do people mess up here? What is it they do here that's wrong? Did you see the sign back there? Which way was it saying to go? Well you're left because this is a dual carriageway so you can only turn left there. But many people mess up on that one because they don't see the sign, and to be fair, it's not that well positioned. This is another massive place people failed all the time. I say failed because this test centre is no longer there, but if you come this way on test other test routes, it's still well worth knowing about. So end of the road, right. Why do they stress end of the road? Yeah, not the little one we just passed, but the end. And the pupil is in the correct lane. Loads of times here people go in the left lane because they're so used to turning right from the left lane on most of the roads. If you were in the left lane here, what would you have to do? You would go left. Do not try and go right by pulling up in the centre. Even though there is room next to where we're going to be in a moment, don't turn right from the left lane because that can be dangerous. All you would do is you would turn left, you would turn around somewhere of the road and come back. I've said this many times before, but it's well worth knowing and hearing over and over again. You do not fail the driving test for going the wrong way. 
you only fail if you do it dangerously. So if you were to signal right and then turn left, that could be enough reason to fail. If you're about to drive down the motorway, they'll stop you. Things like that. But if they say go left and you indicate right and you turn right safely and it's legal to do so, safe, legal and convenient, you will not fail a test for doing that. So we're now coming back to the test centre and we're simply going to turn into the centre and the test will end. So I'm going to end this video here, I'm going to fade out to black. What do you think the result of that test is? Well, I can tell you the result of that test was pass. So yes, the pupil passed. That was a good, solid drive. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, what about the right reverse, where the pupil mounted the curb twice? That's not seen as being a major issue. I've had pupils who have gone up the curb two or three times. And yes, you can say, well, they should be trained not to do that. When you want a driving test, the nerves can sometimes get the better of you. That's why I work with people to overcome driving test anxiety. On the occasions when I don't do that with people, they can get nervous and they can go up the curb and mistakes can happen. Now I've had people that have gone up the curb, they've had both of their tyres on the curb and still passed for doing that. Now this is where the debate about this manoeuvre comes in because people quite rightly say, well, if pupils are going to mount the curb, and it's something they shouldn't be doing anyway, then why do we even do it? That's for another video. There was one other occasion where the pupil signalled too early, but there was no one behind us at that time. There was no one coming out of that road that would have been affected by us. Now normally you would fail for doing that, but again, it isn't as simple as a straight pass or fail. It's all done in the context of what's happening around you at the time. So there you go, that's another successful driving test. Check out these other videos on the screen now, and as always, I'll see you again soon for more videos.